All right, let's go the other way now. Let's drop that ball back. Let's go low. Drop that ball back in this dance. The blade's going to have to be closed. Mm-hmm. So when you even more in the back of the stand, remember because when you put that ball back, well, go ahead, just make your stroke. That's very nice. Remember the tendency when the ball is back is to go left because you don't have enough out. Well, right. that you didn't fall into that trap. You're you're really you're so aware of this movement through the ball. Now you oh, that's all, that's, oh, is that what you thought, I say? All right, here talking to my mic. What did you do? I th thought about the thrust. Uh, what? And then across <laughs> the line. Coming, yeah, just coming across the line, hitting down. Because earlier, before we went to lunch, I actually mentioned that, <laughs> if, but it did go left. So you, so you beat it by going out automatic. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm a victim of my own good teaching <laughs> and my own great student. <laughs> you got me. Okay, I was going to let you hit one a little low left out there. <laughs> and you didn't let me do it. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Ball back. And you're really going to lead too, right? You're really going right. to you're really going to lead your hands visually as you come through or nowhere near you. The ball right. that well in front of your left. And if there's ever one that you're going to even have the delayed finish swivel, it's going to be something like that. I mean, it's like you really delay that finish swivel way out, way out front. Oh. Yeah, a little, that was, no. All right. Maybe, uh, that's just, you know, holding it too long. All right. Let's just, I tell you, let's just let the normal action do the work without trying to do anything special, hooding it or not, or, or de-lofting right. as you come through. Just let the normal layback take care of it. All right. Once again, this whole business of thrust comes into play because the ball is not the normal straight away which means that you, you know, you're going to have to mentally direct that thrust in a different way. So with hey, the, I'm going to think about coming more out now. Wow. Okay. That's good. And give me an adjusted address here, too. Drop the ball back even more on this one. Mm -hmm. So shut the blade down. A little more. Right. See, when you shut it down, now don't you feel like you've really got to come through yeah. this way? See, when you got it open, you feel like you kind of kind of come through this way, right? Right. So just, you just, just shut that sucker down so that you can come through like so. Give me an adjusted address, though. So. Great. So, there's that burner you know if you've got the wind coming at you you know pretty strong you want to keep it down or if you just got to be in a fairway i mean you're going to par five hole like we talked about at lunch maybe you know, you're not rewarded with a gamble or maybe you got ob left and the trees right you, the idea is just get it down there about 200 yards and go on to the you know have your little wedge in and then go to the next tee uh frank beard who was a uh senior now of course now he's not active on the, any of the pga tours he wrote a book called pro years ago it was interesting, he was engaged by one of the golf uh, co book companies uh, as a journeyman pro to write this book. Well, he got so into dictating his notes and being so conscious of what he did, he turned out that year to be the leading money one. It was incredible. I mean, he was but nothing like this. And so the year he kept his diary for this book uh, was the year of, of, of his greatest achievement. Well, anyway, so in this book, Frank Beard wrote called Pro, he, talk, he was also very money conscious. He had family, you know, and it was, you know, the glamour fades fast. The back of the, you got the station wagon full of kids and divers and this, that, and the other. But he talked about how he would get down to the last stage of the tournament. He was high on the list. He just wanted to finish. He was just trying to get it back to the house, so to speak, the clubhouse. And he developed what he called a wiggle shot. A little shot that looked like nothing off the tee, a little low liner that would just kind of squiggle out in the fairway, turn over a little bit left to right. And he was doing nothing but getting home, getting his check, and getting out of town. Uh, no, no, big, no great designs on being Jack Nicholas or Arnold Palmer and the great players. He just wanted to get the job done. Well, this shot right here that you're working on can just be the one that gets the job done. You can't draw it on the scorecard. We're going to have about one minute left. You want to try to make this like a change? Each of the three basic motions, basic, acquired, and total, 
uh, with any hinge action on any plane, <laughs> open, sh closed, or square, and he can do it swinging. We didn't work on anything on hitting, although we did put some punch into these, these pitch shots. Uh, but basically, he's, in, uh, he's, he's got a master's uh, execution at this point with his right forearm tracing and his left wrist remaining flat throughout uh, you know, the, the total motion, the swivel in the startup, the swivel and release, the pitch action during impact input and the release swivel, uh, the finish swivel. He's doing all that with his left wrist flat. He's maintaining his alignments. Uh, he goes, he finishes up into a nice balanced position, then rests. There's all that flopping around at the end of the, the finishes is gone. I just think it's just been a marvelous uh, progress over these past two days. What do you think, Colin? Oh, it's been huh? amazing. In the mouth of the pail here. <laughs> Uh, it's been awesome. Thank you again. Though. It's the swing, the golf machine. <laughs> <laughs> Here, give me a hug. <laughs> You're big, but not too big to hug. <laughs>